game number six, usually that's what comes after game number five. And we're gonna have a super quick version analysis of this one. Basically, just like game five, same story, equal, slightly better, more slightly better, that draw, end game, blunder, winning. Okay, I'll see you Wednesday for, ga <laughs> for game seven. And that's true, like Jacob, if I said something that was not totally precise describing the game, Okay, okay, you know, Alex got me a tuna salad and now I, need, I have to slave it over and so full analysis of the game. I haven't seen any of it. Nah. Before, no, Amazing. No, no. No, 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 that's that's amazing. Who has white color? It says Carlsen, this color, and a non white. Wonderful. So, he's pushing him with the Berlin D3. But speak, speaking from opening point of view, I was actually thinking that he should play D4. Like, I actually did, even the first E4 that he played, I didn't really understand. The, the, the problems with E4 is that there are just some lines, many lines, that just kind of kill the game in some way. Like the Berlin, okay, you want to play the Berlin, play the Berlin, but okay, it's I think only opening in chess that I've never really analyzed, don't want to analyze, wouldn't analyze, no. Like, I don't know, kind of no fun. But apparently for Kramnik it meant world championship and against Carlsen is also meaning world champ, being world champion. So there was, Kasparov wrote a bit, right? He said for Anand, don't do the mistake I did, son. Well, maybe the sun I added, <laughs> but uh, just basically like don't be stubborn and you know try to crack the Berlin, play something else. Kasparov couldn't do it one one game against Kramnik. Maybe you know play the Scotch. I mean, find some ideas. Have your team find some ideas somewhere. I don't know. Play Queens, play King's Gambit with some new ideas. Play the Vienna. But mainstream, mainline, Berlin, no, what, nothing. I mean, you have to play the lines that you play today. And that's they never play that, that pawn to queen, or, or whatever that. F-O? No, no, in the Berlin, that other line you showed the last time, it doesn't seem like they play that very frequently. Wait, oh, oh, the, you mean take and rookie one? Oh yeah, Th this line they used to play that, no, but I'm rookie one, I was thinking. oh 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 yeah 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 this, oops, no. yeah 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 this line you see, someone a true believer and follower. They don't play that very often. Yeah, and Andrekin beat we mentioned Andrekin beat Kar Karmnik, and just now in the Russian Championship, maybe probably. It's an it's better than the other one going straight into the end game. Well, the thing the thing is that. This probably goes to another end game state, you know? <laughs> just, just, just one that we don't... Trading queens immediately, though. Yeah, I, well, trading queens, there's nothing wrong with trading queens. Trading queens into nothing, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah trading queens into some advantage is, is cool. But, okay, I mean, you, you're playing world championship match. You have a team of several very strong grandmasters working for you. Get, get, get them yeah. find something, find something. So, you know, even if objectively it's a draw, find something that is impossible for on the board to find a draw. Some come with something, come up with something. No, nothing. Were there any like novelties in this game? Or yes. Game? Yes. Big one, huge one, coming soon. Okay. Meaningless one, but coming soon. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, at least in D4, I think you, you have some some territory that you can maybe get more game, it's not really like that decisive de into, okay, end game, droish end game, or something like this. You want to go even into more uncharted territory, play C4, and go to some English sheds or whatever, just something, you know? But, no, I was surprised with E4 uh, at all. So this is what they play, and now rookie 8, yeah, there have been lines of, D6 and so on. Okay, you know, uh, Aronian is the, the, the dude to follow here. 
Okay, novelty. Anand comes up with new, if not especially surprising new move. Well, again, Carlsen has been following a recent Anand game against Aronian from Alekhan Memorial in April. What, what? I was just saying that did Bishop G5. Novelty. <laughs> from, yeah, so Knight BD2 was played in that game and, you know, it's like um, how Seinfeld once described this show. It's a show about nothing. Yeah. Exactly. It's a show about nothing. Nothing. What, what you, nothing. It's a show about nothing. Yeah, this is this line. This is this line. It's a line about nothing. So, yeah, I mean, okay, you know, knight bd2, not, not, even, not even moving the pieces here. Okay, okay, I'll move the pieces, maybe. In hopes of another tuna salad before next lecture. Knight f1, knight e7, okay, yada, 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 and draw. <laughs> like, yeah, only I'm not certain that Carlson has seen this episode, but because apparently he wanted to win. But, okay, bishop g5. So, okay, if h4, I guess it would just go back and be similar to the game. It was interesting. I was looking with Varush today. We were doing it live on ICC. Okay, to me, they said that bishop e6 was computer choice number eight. Eight. To me, I see two moves in the position. And again, I, it's just my ignorance in understanding. I play h6. Well, maybe he doesn't see I'll take the bishop. And if not, okay, I want to block this diagonal. I'll play bishop e6. And... Okay, probably not best, but I don't know. It just looks simple. You know, Aronian has so many games in this, in those lines in the Ray Lupez, different version, the anti-martial system. He pretty much never... Something important. When you see this one, you don't want to get the bishop here. When you want to get the bishop on b7, when this pawn is on d4, because then you're actually targeting e4. If the pawn on d3, bishop b7, no good. The same, by the way, if the pawn is on d4, bishop g4 is good or decent. Why? Because then you are putting pressure on the knight and putting pressure on d4. If the pawn is on d3, you will just be met with h3 and g4 because the center is so solid and you will have a very blocked bishop there. So this is just really important to understand why many times you don't see bishop b7 when pawn is on d3. Aronian pretty much never plays this and many other players. That's, I think, right approach. So, bishop e6 for an ignorant like me was just natural. And computers were suggesting rook b8, hc, I don't know. Bishop e6. So, here were some interesting lines. If take, probably has to take with the pawn. I mean, this is maybe not so cool. Some ideas like this, and they'll follow with d5. Not so, so cool. There are some lines like this, but... It has to be bad for black, like probably really bad for black. Unless, unless there is this ugly move and then I'm taking it back and actually should call Varouge and tell him that we both didn't see anything during our live show. <laughs> Okay, so apparently rook take is okay, and the computer didn't blunder like plus three. Yeah, we. Uh, you see the magic of the St. Louis Chess Club, you know? Couldn't see it on ICC here. Everything is so simple. It's, it's so clear. <laughs> it's so clear. Well, it might also have to do with the part that now it's 2.30 in the afternoon and not 2.30 at night. No, it's the light. <laughs> it's the what? You said it. So, apparently that was possible. No, okay, bishop e6 is normal. What, what do they want? Okay, and take. That was tiny surprising. Okay, pawn take is logical, but here, this kid has potential. He played, no, such a great move. Like, wow. Jacob nodding his head, so don't say a word. Here, we will let Alex, that we've all gathered here to give him a brief analysis of the game. Tell us, what would you play with black? No, this is amazing how... Huh? Bishop b6. Bishop b6 is actually not bad move. That was a Jacobian suggestion. So not bad. But you don't want to play like Varouge. You want to play like Magnus. 
Come on. So what do we have here? Yes. Any thoughts? I'm trying to find something I would normally play, maybe rookie sticks. I mean, no. <laughs> okay. It, it's a very cool move. Super cool move. Uh, uh, very nice. Not to C5, just to oh. D7. Oh, okay. And for people that know the Briar variation, okay, let's. Let, let's show quickly the bio variation. Anand and Carlsen had many games. We, many games in 2010 in the bio variation, which is a major, a major response to the main line in the Ray Lopez. And Carlsen mentioned this himself after. Well, I know the Briar, so. But still, the, the fact that he connected ideas, big potential. So this is the main position in the Ray Lopez for a long time. And Karpov had many, many games in the Zaitsev variation. Knight a5 is Chigori, and Karpov also played knight d7. No, knight b8 is a very, kind of like, very popular move, mainly because of Carlsen, many games, 2010. Kamsky played this, Karpov used to play some games like this before, like in the 70s and this. Well, many great players. Like, what is the idea? Open the diagonal for the bishop, and put the knight on d7 where it kind of coordinates well with the other pieces, also not blocking the c pawn. It's a big line, very, very, very big line. And I think in 2010, Anand and Carlsen played four or five games just in that position. Like that was really... So, very, very nice for Alex. I mean, this is just a great move. I mean, solve all the problems. Me and Va were looking at some lines like here and here, and then if G5, some captures, and ah, you know, he doesn't even want to look at that. And I mean, this is just absolutely great. So just no problems. But now seriously, like if this position, you should be losing with white. I mean, that's the thing. If you lose here, that's it. You know, there's no, no, nowhere. I mean. Okay, 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 okay. Of course, a5, automatically a5, right? Automatically. Getting rid of the weakness, right? He played before, before it's, he's going to get something. Let's get rid of the weakness. I will give it to Var. By the way, which move here we're going to play automatically? Oh, maybe not automatically, but still, super reasonably. Yes? Alex, you, you're hitting it right on, so... No, uh, yes, you, only you. <laughs> well, come on, like, knight, knight b8, and now you're quiet? <laughs> I would play knight g4. Mm. Bishop d6. <laughs> I've seen that! You took every, right, everything I believed in! <laughs> no, okay, what is the bishop doing here? Okay, put it here. But now, seriously, okay, so we said 
it's a draw. And I will say that VAR said maybe black is tiny better. But okay, we played and like just showed it's kind of okay. Take, take. No, the problem is there is no knight d5 because f2 is hanging. That's a big one. But dude, like what's that? I mean, okay, <laughs> like seriously, play here, here, something like this, this. No, if, if, I mean, I understand maybe black is, bishop is tiny, tiny, tiny better than white. But okay, you know, let, let, let's play this queen e2 move and see that Zero, 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 oh, th not enough zeros there to continue. Now, does it mean that Carlsen might not outplay and beat someone like me in this position? Of course, of course it's possible. Of course it, even more likely than not likely. But he should not be able to outplay the world champion in this position. No, now that, that, that's the thing. Yes, of course, it's a game. Objectively, it's completely okay for white. Like, where are the weaknesses? Nothing. Like, wh why should white be losing this game? Why? There, there has to be a reason. It's not like, well, randomly. No, and the world champion is there. And you cannot, you cannot be world champion and lose those positions. I mean, that, this is much... This, this is really serious. I mean, okay, it's not serious. It's over. The, the match is over. The match I thought was over quite before. But it's kind of... I might even say tiny embarrassing because if in the previous game we can say that okay white was tiny tiny better the pawn on c6 was weak he put some pressure they got into equal and he played one wrong move you cannot I mean it's tiny not so cool you know to lose such position he played queen g4 and here you know this is how Fisher, Fisher said how you win games with black you know how you win games with black what Fischer said, first you equalize. So that stage already passed. Now, possibility to get microscopic advantage. Take. I have to take with the pawn. Okay. So, not that great. I mean, I mean, still incredible, unbelievable. Not that great. I mean, black is already like this better. And we were speaking with... Var, is it going to be a draw or not? And Carson just, well, that's why he's the greatest player today. Just hit all the right points. He said, look, Anand is upset after yesterday's game. Black, black, black objectively is microscopically better. Objectively. I mean, he, he has some plans. The center, he, the white pawns are somewhat weak. Yeah, of course it should be a draw. But... But Anand also upset. I mean, maybe if yesterday game was draw, maybe they wouldn't even be battling here. But, well, he understands everything. Rook f1, c5. And tiny bit more. Tiny bit more. So now this is becoming weak, weak, weaker. I mean, it's, again, it's putting numbers. Okay, we are at the zero. Apparently, my database is updated. <laughs> All right. Chess base tweak is updated. No. Okay. But, yeah. I mean, is there c5, c4? Okay. d4 was played. Actually, here was really big moment that I wanted to say two puzzles like me and Val, but I will say one puzzle like me. Uh, Val is not in that group. Like... Why not d5? Why not d5? Not clear, right? I mean, just d5 and... And the thing is that... There will be some counterplay for white here when... If black just decides to go all over there. So, d5 we like. And it's like kind of like, okay, please, please, please play d5. Like, okay, but why not? <laughs> no, like this is bizarre. I mean, it's amazing how, how Anand is not in control. He's not in control. In when basically, the, in a big game of chess, there are many important decisions to take. Exchange, not exchange, close the structure, not close the structure. 
Anand kind of chose not to do anything. Not to do anything. He said, okay, my pos the position is okay, and he's right. I'll make a draw. Okay, but why not d5? Okay, now another very important moment, which is... Ta -dum, ta -dum. Why to play? Okay, what is the obvious move? The obvious one's queen d1, but I don't like where the king is at. Can I play like king g1 or something? No, but queen d1 is really bad. I just play d5, d5 yeah. Or might be really bad. Well, it's obvious. Oh, it's obvious. <laughs> Rook d5? Rook d5. Yeah, for example, queen d1, I just might play here. And for example, this yeah. is probably, lo probably just lost, like this or here. Like, this king is not so cool over there. So something like that is going to be evil. Yeah, rook d5 is very critical. You know, we were here teaching some kids and something, like, about exchanges. Exchanges are always critical. The less pieces are on the board, exchanges becomes a matter of life and death. I mean, seriously, if you exchange right piece to a draw, that's it. Maybe if you don't exchange it, also that's it. Or maybe if you exchange to a lost endgame, that's it. When there are very re much reduced material, it's kind of clear conclusion. Like, if you say someone looking at a simple pawn endgame and say why it's better, it's kind of ridiculous, right? I mean, you want yes or no. There is no, in most, end, most simple endgames, there is no, well, it's better. Funny. Rook d5 was probably drawish. Like, we looked at this position. I mean, okay, I'm not going to analyze this super duper deeply, but it looked like it should be okay, this endgame. It looked like it. King f8, I don't Look like some smart people think it might be reasonable. Well, okay. Actually, not smart people, but maybe. But here is a decision. King h1. Okay, so now you don't have this anymore. Didn't he move his king twice like that? He, he, he just played down many moves meaningless. He's going to move. Wait, you're going to enjoy the rest. <laughs> so look, look at the, what he's playing here. Here, and that's triangulation with the king and queen. Ah. No, but what, what can he play? He, he missed the opportunity that he had. And once again, critical moment to, to see what's happening with the exchanges of the rooks. He had this opportunity and he missed it. But still, the question is, how is black going to get something here? And here he played queen g3. And this is... Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you really have to do nothing and see if your opponent can break through. It's very important. It's just very important. Many people, I've seen many, many people. No, not, uh, no, not 2,800. No, but many club players, whatever level they are, that the position is kind of all right, but they just don't feel right with the concept of doing nothing. The concept of I just sit and wait and don't hurt the position. Just sit and wait and don't hurt the position. You know what computers say here for white? But th this is also what we thought. King g1, h5, king h2, queen f8, queen f4, king g1, king h1, king h2. That's the end of the line. But basically, you know, amazing. Now was the time to do nothing. Because black has some weakness here. And it's not really easy for him to go after this one. And it's probably a draw. I mean, yes, black is 0, 3, 0, 4 better. No, computer-wise. I mean, okay, of course for a human it's not that easy, but it's up to black to show he has a 
plan, it's up for black to show that he can really get something here. And I don't think so. This move was played and it's losing a pawn. And now important thing, if take, <sighs> this is a draw, this. And now how to make a draw in the most comfortable way? I mean, maybe best, maybe only way, but just clearly making a draw. You know, so, huh? Yeah, rook d4, and after rook d take, b3. Yeah. Three against two, you know, I was speaking with Varouz. Varouz said, oh, we can still play this. I was telling him. <laughs> No, no, I mean, he, he said they can still, I mean, if this is the best, this is the best and whatever. And I was telling him, okay, I, I put 1 to 100 with you right now that Anand is not going to lose this one. I mean, okay, you know, can, I told him I'll put 1 to 100. I mean, probably I should have made it 5. I could have gotten frozen yogurt, 5 to 500. No, this Anand would not lose. Billion out of billion, you sh he, he would not lose this. Yeah? Oh, but uh, but uh, but the blitz game, right? Yeah. Oh, that 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 was that was insane, insane. I mean, I couldn't believe that. I've seen the position and I've seen the score, and I went over it, and I said, no, it was he flagged. He lost on the board. <laughs> yeah, but but that was kind of blitz, and he tried to win like insanely. Yeah. But of course, if you simplify to one side, it's that's actually important line to say because once again, I found a BFF in analysis. Not a bad one, Ikaro. Because I was advocating during the analysis with VAR, just going to 2 versus 1, or, or sorry, 2 H and F, or 3 versus 1 on one side and just make a draw. And Ikaro after it, like, I mean, maybe, maybe I mean, before, but was kept saying, no, why, why did, he, when, when the position was lost, why did he play that? Why not just, we will see that. So he took, and took first here. Okay, it's a pawn. It's a pawn. But he's a bit tied here. He's a bit tied here. No. All right. Rook d6, not allowing the king out. Okay, this was an idea. I mean, it still, it still looks very much in a droish territory. Here was actually... Here was actually very, very... Critical point. By the way, computers are in a Deutsch territory. So Anand was right, by the way. I mean, he was right. He understand, he understood that he has enough counterplay for a draw. Okay, we told you, you know, we kind of bash him and... No, um, okay, he doesn't deserve this, to be honest. But, I mean, he's such a great genius player, but... It, it sometimes feels like, uh, how to say it, like, you know, there are some boxes that have fought few fights more than they should and they kind of paid more serious price than few rating points right those that didn't retire on time i mean anand okay they, he cannot retire as the world champion really it doesn't work that way but i just at least uh, hopefully he's gonna get some dignity in the match you know if he will win one despite the fact that my prediction and like very house thing will prove wrong it will be good. You know, he deserved that as a, such a great chess player. He doesn't deserve to lose the game, the match in... Uh, because he might, he might lose minus three, he might lose minus four. Not so cool. No, he, des he deserved better than this, I think. So here again, it's just a draw. I mean, okay. Carlsen played king f7. And h5, they said, suggested some ideas like tiny improving the pieces, but it's still a draw. White is just rook on b6 and bring the king to f3, and we, we didn't really see any any concrete winning plan. Although, of course, it's a big play. I mean, Carlsen will play for two, three hours and probably beat most players in the world somehow, but... Yeah, and here Anand played h5, and you know, people were asking him, uh, you know, after, like, why you gave the pawn, and okay, I mean, Poor Anand, like, really didn't want to be there. Some, some days are like that. But that's a good move, actually. I mean, that's a very decent move. It's just, at this point, I, I missed the old H5 idea. This Carlsen is saying, I didn't think you can really give up a pawn like this. Now, it was a draw. 
Okay. I mean, I mean you ca you cannot make too many of those mistakes in a match against Carlson. Yeah. yeah, and this is the moment. Like for example, how many others moment after it? Like, dude, just something like this, I guess. Like, I don't know. I mean, this has to be super duper theoretically draw. I mean, it has to be. That's it, right? I mean, we don't need to be, we don't need to be Anand. You know what? I'll, I will even say that even don't need to be Hikaro to, to say no, that this is a draw. We kind of suggested it. Yeah, it's a draw. I mean, of course, it can be played. Of course, you know, uh, even the H and F, which is theoretical draw, Kramnik beat Aronian, but it's a draw. It's a draw and it's a theoretical draw on one side of the board, so you don't need to have some super amazing things. But, okay, I can understand him not going there, although he just finishes every tactics. So he played this move. Okay. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. This check. You know, it was Bobby Fischer that says, a partner sees a check, a partner gives a check, right? He, and he, co he meant about one of his games that he play. Hmm. But making it much more, much more difficult, like, I mean, Rook C8 not allowing the king to cross is just simple draw. I mean, he has to go back, and how is he going to really improve here, Black? Not easy. Not to mention that at any given moment we can maybe make effort to play b3 and go back to our old position. Instead, yeah. it's the last possible imaginable trick in the position. It's like, it's after you know, after overtime, overtime again, you know, like this, like everyone is leaving the field. Like we were saying, like kind of, okay, it's a draw, but okay, here, okay, and here, here he has some troubles because he cannot, without those pawns, it's probably an easy draw. Without those pawns, because the rook is just checking. Without those pawns, it's an easy draw. He's just going to be checking him with the rook and Defending everything and okay, those are double H pawns. Like, it's kind of, kind of. I mean, let, let's let's for a second. Oh, I cannot uh, set the position. But without those pawns, here maybe let, 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 let's do it beautifully for a second. I will make those pawns disappear. Okay, okay, kids, don't try this at home. Okay, this position. Okay, check. Check. Okay, I don't know, something like this, maybe. Like, this, I mean, maybe maybe here I allowed <coughs> h3, so I should not allow this. Actually, I should probably play here tiny, maybe here. Why should I allow your king there? Let me play. No, maybe I should get my king from here, you know? Because h3 is an idea, but maybe just this move. I mean, I think this should be a draw. It should be a draw, although I don't, I don't like my king getting cut this way, you know, with something evil like that. Okay, he, he, has, he has to play a bit more accurate than just, just moving the pieces, but it should be, they said it should be a draw, and I kind of easily believe them. Instead... Ronnie, could you resize that board? All right. Yeah, we couldn't analyze this rook endgame, but I'm going to leave it to some people in a better... Uh, less important things to do, such as getting sleep. <laughs> but, and here there was one move, only one move to make a draw. So, once again, Rook A1 in previous game was pretty only move to make a draw, and here one only move to make a draw. And it's not Rook A4. <laughs> it was B4. Well, you want to keep the Rook on the rank, so that after something <coughs> like this, H3, and here, I think he wanted to go down with the rook, right? 
I think that was the analysis. I'm going to. I think that was this. Okay, F4. Carlsen only said maybe when asked if he thought the position was winning. Without this pawn b2 and c3, it would be a dead draw, Carlsen. But this pawn seriously inhibit the rook, and h3, f3, h3, f3 is coming fast. Now it's interesting. Carlsen thought, said, oh no, it's lost. Just doing like this with the hand. And Anand said, no, and here I was lost. But uh, interesting that they both did. And both players thought this idea was too slow, but it seems to be a draw. B4, H3, Rook, G6, Rook, C7. Rook, C7. Maybe no difference if C8. King, D3. B5, F3. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Rook, F3 first. Yeah. Of course, I didn't understand why King, D3. Just overlooked. This, this, rook f7. Yeah, yeah and yeah. notice the white, white gets a lot of counterplay. I mean, you know, Yermo, joking, no joking, always say when we are uh, quoting Aliochin, I was not once, pair pawns should be pushed. No, but pair pawns should be pushed. You know, this is really Every Russian schoolboy knows, maybe not a world champion from India. Like, pass pawns should be pushed. I mean, I, I've seen some people say, you know, every ha half of the 2400 player in Moscow would make draw, easy draw with white. I, I think so. I mean, I don't know. It's like maybe they didn't lose a game before. Maybe they are not a nun. Maybe all the stress is coming to him. I mean, and I don't think that a nun 10 years ago would have lost any of those positions pretty much. There is one very notorious endgame that he lost to Leko. Three against three and an A-pawn, but... Anyway, Rook A4. Just lost. He's just lost now. Yeah. yeah, and here just nothing to look. I mean... I mean, if Rook E1... This is the big idea. King on h2 is disgusting. Yeah. Enough. No, very, very kind of sad game, you know, like it was symmetrical, symmetrical equal. He played c4, black was 0, 2 better, white had many possibilities to even not get into a pawn down. He got into a pawn down and Anand played really okay. He had enough chances. He had always enough counterplay for a draw. At no point other than the last point he was lost. At no point, at no point it was even much worse. He was a pawn down, but always the rook was tied to b5. h5 was good. It's kind of, kind of, how the game deteriorated was one thing. I said, I think I said something on move 57, 50 whatever, we spoke with Var, and I said, well, it's gonna be a draw. Well, just before he blundered, it's a draw. Anand played bad but not bad enough to lose the game. Well, yeah, he played rook a4. So, but, but, that, but that was really the story of the game up until then. You know, even if he had made a draw, he played bad, just not bad enough to lose. He was outplayed in the opening and some part of the middle game. But then he had to rook a4. And yeah, I think, I think he kind of understand that the match is, that the match looks over. I mean, may, maybe this is what will, he will play maybe now really all in, and maybe we will see a tiny bit different game. Maybe. But I don't think it's going to help him at all. <laughs> so, okay, well, we'll be here on Wednesday. How many more games? We're going to have two more games. And we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm.